Check. 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 Hey. Check. 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 Dave's going to come up and look me over real close. Uh, my announcement, Alzheimer's support group this week at 3 p.m. Breadline Thursday. Uh, <laughs> not even a tap on the shoulder. Breadline Thursday. Uh, we are looking probably for one more definite VBS volunteer. We need to supply four VBS volunteers for one class the whole week. Uh, they're looking for two adults and maybe a couple kids, so we're looking for maybe one more tween or high schooler who might be interested in helping. And then uh, pretty quick here, we're going to publish the sign-up list for anybody who wants to volunteer in all the different places, but we're still looking for one more of our mandatory volunteers. Um, big thank yous to uh, Karen Bruxford for the decorations around the church for Mother's Day. Thank you very much, Karen. Make sure you say thank you to her. And... Uh, Brenda Burns for the flowers outside around the uh, bell tower look very beautiful this morning. Uh, that's all the announcements I have. Does anybody else have any announcements this morning before we get started with worship? Any other announcements? Oh, Mike. Yeah, our bi adult Bible study after church is uh, going to have a little fun today, and so uh, and then decide if we want to continue off and on a little bit this summer. So if it's something you might be interested, please stop in. And like I said, it's just going to be kind of a fun little morning that we're going to have together. So uh, if it's something you'd be interested in, stop in. Adult Bible study. Check out about adult Bible study. Check. 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 Still not on. Adult Bible study. All right after worship, this could be a fun morning. I'll just talk real loud. Anything else? Any other announcements before we get started this morning? Quiet group today. Everybody tired already from day-long graduation parties. Raise your hand if you went to at least one graduation party yesterday. Or this weekend. Or keep your hand up if you went to at least two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, Carrie Burns is our winner with eight graduation parties so far. Congratulations, Carrie. Well, just yesterday. Just yesterday. <laughs> wow. Wow. Good for you. Well, uh, we'll be definitely praying for our grads. I know uh, I heard several pretty excited that they got through their parties yesterday without major rains coming through Prairie City. Um, but uh, we're excited. We have a few, a few surprises for Mother's Day this morning. Um, but otherwise, we're just happy that you're here this morning worshiping with us. Uh, I'll invite the praise team to come forward and open us in song this morning. Why don't you take one more chance to stand up, smile, and greet those around you. Give them a happy Mother's Day if it's applicable, applicable, and let's worship the Lord this morning.
number of prayer concerns still in your bulletin. Most of them probably look familiar. Thanks. Uh, several updates from the week. Uh, many of you knew Tom Foster uh, here in town. His visitation is this afternoon at the funeral home here in Prairie City from 3 to 5. Uh, we'll be praying for his family as well as continuing to pray for Gene Snetzler's family after his passing, uh, praying for the Weinigers after Tom lost his uncle Dave this past week. Um, got an update from Brenda about baby Tara. Um, I think I saw her this morning. Is she here? In case there's another update. Oh, right there. Uh, same update. She was having some aspiration of formula into her lungs, so they've address that and now they're working to uh, help heal her lungs as well as she's got the the ASD the heart defect they're hoping will seal on its own um, so we're going to be praying for her this morning uh, other updates Brian called me this week and told me Trisha headed down to Missouri again um, to be with her dad who uh, his oxygen levels had dropped uh, quite a bit so they put him back in the hospital and she went down there to be with him uh, John Buckley doing well at the hospital or at the uh, Clive Rehab Center, the Mercy One Rehab Center. He's probably going to be there till the end of this coming week if they can get him up uh, to speed on his rehab. He had the plate and, and quite a few screws put in his ankle, um, and uh, they've been trying to get his house ready for him when he comes back. So we'll be praying for John. And then uh, Inga Van Persen uh, has been moved to Park Center Skilled Care after falling and breaking her, lib, her ribs, four ribs this week. Um, was doing well when we saw her, but was not really mobile at all too much yet. So we'll be praying for Inga. Uh, other updates, I've got... Wayne let us know uh, Mike continues to do well, had his staples removed, and uh, has started chemo pills. Even though he doesn't have cancer, it's for the muscle disease he's suffering from. And it's his birthday today, too, so we'll be uh, praying for Mike, which reminds me, we have a couple birthdays. I don't know if they're here. I won't say them out loud, just in case. I don't see them. Anybody else have any joys or concerns this morning? Any updates from the bulletin that we maybe don't have? Just asking for prayers for my dad and a group from Central Campus Ministries that's leaving for Tanzania today. So, um, yeah, just for safety. And he just had surgery not very long ago, um, just to tear the meniscus surgery. And so we're hoping he behaves himself. And that's, yeah, yeah, that's it. Safety. <laughs> safety for Joe and the Central College team as they head to Tanzania. And this is like a evangelical trip mission project probably doing all kinds of work and great stuff like that so we'll be praying for joe and the central students other joys or concerns i'm not seeing any hands if not grab a hand from somebody in your own household if not uh you're, if you're not sitting next to somebody you know uh, grab your other hand, and we're praying for all those this morning who aren't with us in worship, who are recuperating from a long day yesterday, or watching online, or in a medical facility, or homesick, or traveling, or all the other places. Uh, again, this morning in worship, we were reminded that Christ is the connection that keeps us all uh, together as family, even when we are separated. That his gift of the Holy Spirit ties us as close as if we were right next to each other, whether we are in the same room or around the world. Let's come to God in prayer this morning. God, we come to you this morning so thankful. We come to you in awe. We come to you rejoicing, Lord, for the gift that you've given us, not just of the mothers who birthed us, but the grandmothers and the aunts and the sisters and the neighbors and the friends and the teachers and all of those people who heard your call that family is more than just blood. 
all of those who heard your call that all of your children are one family together. God, we come to you thanking you for all of those people who have taken the time in their lives to love us and care for us and instruct us and raise us and bring us to this place where we can reflect now on how bountiful of a gift you have given us by extending our family beyond those that we lived in the same house with or can see on a family tree. God, we remember this morning that you have called all of us to look beyond our immediate families and see the ties we have to all of your children in this world. And you've called us all to be mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers. To gaze upon all of those, even the strangers that we see and recognize your image within them. God, we would pray this week that even as we rejoice in the fact that we are called your children, we raise up names of other children that belong to you that we specifically mentioned in prayer this morning. God, we would pray that you would comfort those families who are grieving. The Weinickers, the Snetzlers, the Fosters, all of those people that knew and loved Dave and Jean and Tom and they can grieve and celebrate who they are and who they were as your children on this earth. God, we raise up your children who are asking for prayers, for healing, or who are going through medical treatments and will be relying on you not only for your healing graces, but also for your great patience and comfort. We lift up Dean as he goes through radiation for his cancer. Inga, as we pray that her pain lessens as her ribs heal. We pray for John, that not only would you continue to strengthen his ankle, but Lord, that you would give his family the patience and strength and wisdom as they're ready for him to come home this week. God, we pray for safe travels for Tricia and for all her family as they surround Jim and hold them close. We pray for the doctors and nurses who are treating him. We would pray that you would continue to reveal yourself in their midst as they love on their father and care for him. God, continue to hear our prayers for Tara. Lord, it is overwhelming to think how small and precious Tara is in this moment, and yet you, God, are the one who knows her better than anyone. We would pray you would continue to knit her together and heal her body and be with her family on this Mother's Day as they surround her with love. God, we pray you continue to be with Larry as he recovers from his surgery, as they continue to address what comes next. We pray your healing mercies on Carrie, on Kurt, on all those who are in the midst of a journey, trying to understand what's going on within them. God, hear our prayers for Joe and the Central College team as they travel to Tanzania. Lord, we know you are already preparing hearts in that country to receive them. You have work prepared for their hands, but you also have work prepared for their hearts and minds. Give them the words to speak, even if they may not know the language, the prayers to pray, the gospel to share. God, on this Mother's Day, we lift up Austin, Gavin, all of those men and women who may be separated this weekend from mothers and grandmothers and aunts and sisters and all those who love them deeply. 
God, we would pray that not only would you continue to keep them safe, but God, hear our prayers that you would give them those surrogate mother figures wherever they may be in the world. God, as we come to you this morning, we remember that even though we call you Father, you remind us throughout Scripture, you are also just like a caring mother. You have told us you are the mother hen who pulls us close under your wing for safety. You are the nursing mother who will never forget we are at your side and need to be fed. You are the perfect parent that reminds us there are so many children in this world who need to be reminded they are known and loved. They are forgiven and called. God, as we close this prayer this morning, we remember your son, Jesus Christ, the ministry that he partook on this earth, the love he showed his own mother even while dying on the cross to make sure that she was taken care of. We close this prayer with the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Children are invited forward this morning for the children's message. Come on down. If you've got dollars and quarters, wave them in the air and they'll come grab them from you. I'll get the plates. There you go. Thank you so much. Come on down. If you have, oh, there's one way in the back in the middle. There's one in the middle over here. There's one on the far left. Look around. Look for the hands waving. There's a couple down. Oh, there's several now. There's more hands popping up everywhere. Come on out. Oh, boy. Thank you. Thank you. There's more hands out there. Look around. Look around. Look for the hands. I think we got this section. We got this section. We got that. Oh, there's some more in this middle section. Anybody want to go down this middle section? There's a few people who are taking it on this. Oh, boy. Look at all that. Come on down. Come on down. Any more hands are missing? There's a lot. Yeah, I know. Any more hands are missing? Oh, very nice. Very nice. Uh, have to look for the cross this morning. The cross is near something that reminds us how much we love all the mothers in the world. Ready? Set. Go. What up here could remind us of all the mothers who love us in the world. Whoa, you okay? I moved over too far. The Bible, no, no, that's a good place. The organ, no, that's a good place. It's not a pencil, no. It's kind of close to me. Where could it be? You're born, you're born. Oh, right next to all of the carnation flowers. Here's what we do every year at First Reformed Church. We give carnations to all of those people who are like our moms. So watch this. I want you to turn around and look at all these people out here because you're about to have a big job. If you are a mom, raise your hand. Keep it held up. Now you guys have to come get flowers and take one to everybody who's got their hand up. Ready? Set, go. And remember, not just your own mom, but anybody who's got their hand up. Just one to start, yep. Just one. Well, you can take more with you as you go. Take a few, yeah. And try to get everybody who's got their hand up. One flower per person, yep. Even if they try to grab for more, say, oh, until we get everybody covered, one flower. That's a lot of flowers. All right. Just grab a couple. You can come back and get more if you need them. There you go. There you go. All right. They're getting real picky. They must know some people's favorite colors. All right. Once you get three or four, take off. Go, go hand them out. Go hand them out. You want a yellow too? Okay. There you go. All right.
Who's still got their hands up? Lots of hands. Hold them high. Go get them. Go get them. You getting pink too? Okay. You gave one to your mom. All right. There's still lots of hands up. Lots of hands up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Hold them up high. There's a couple down the middle. Right down the middle. If your hand is still up, hold it up high so we can make sure we don't miss you. There's a couple more. There's a couple more. All right. Everybody come back if we've got them all. Come on back. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. Oh, we got one broken. You know what? We just take the bottom off. All right. Pop them all back in the tub. All back in the tub. Now, here's the thing. Hopefully now everybody who's a mom or a grandma, because they're all moms, have a flower. But here's the thing I always remember every year on Mother's Day. Moms and grandmas aren't the only folks who love us like moms. In fact, how many of you have a sister or how many of you are a sister? Do you ever feel like you kind of are a mom to your brothers or sisters? Yes, you're an older sister. Do you ever feel like you're kind of like a mom to your brothers? little bit. Raise your hand out there if you don't have a flower yet, but you are somebody's sister. Some of you aren't telling the truth. I know it. Oh, there's one over here. There's a couple of other. Because we know that sisters can be just like moms. Don't fib to us. Don't fib to us. If you're a sister who doesn't have a flower yet, we know that you brothers and sisters just like a, I know as we had a long heart to heart, she told me, sometimes I look at Kate and go, he still needs a lot of work. I'm going to do the best I can. I you never got anybody else. Yeah. All right. I think we got all the moms, grandmas. All right. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. All right. I have this good friend who said her mom got really, really sick. And when her mom was sick, guess what she had to do? She had to take care of her just like a mom takes care of their daughter. She had to take care of her own mom like she was the mom. If there's anybody out there, any women who don't have a flower, who are a daughter, raise your hand. Because we know daughters sometimes have to be mothers too. Now, come on, folks. Did we miss anybody? Does every woman out there have a flower? Is, are you thinking? Because right afterwards, you didn't get a flower, then the whole congregation is going to surround you on the lawn and hug you and say Happy Mother's Day at the same time. Did we get If any of you up here our sisters or daughters, which is all of you girls. You can all grab a flower too. And we have enough flowers that at the end, if you know a mother or a grandmother or a sister or an aunt or any woman that is like a mother, you can grab one and take them to her even if you're not one of the kids up here. Come on and grab a flower. You can take, well, take one for now. And then after church, you can come grab another one or two if you know somebody you're going to see today that might want a flower too. But just one for now. You know who you're going to see? I'm going to give one to my tree. Oh, okay. Well, interesting. That's, yeah, I don't know if we can plant these. I don't know. I'm not an expert on flowers, but these might be kind of hard to plant. You think? Yeah, the same color. All right, grab a seat. Grab, grab a seat. Grab a seat. Everybody grab a seat. There you go. Everybody grab a seat. All right. The colors go right here. Today for your coloring sheets, we're remembering all the moms who've loved us. So I have lots and lots and lots of coloring sheets right here with flowers on them. And you can take more than one. And I want you to give one to all the people who kind of act like a mom to you. For instance, we have a preschool here at church. And we have these wonderful teachers named Miss Mary Catherine and Miss Kesley. And I bet Miss Mary Catherine would agree with this because I've heard it. Once in a while, guess what happens when the kids are running around? Once in a while, I've heard one of the kids who are not her child say, Mom. Have you ever been called Mom, Miss Mary Catherine? A few times. I was 
a little bit once in a while. And guess what? About a month ago, one of the little boys looked at me and called me dad. And I had to go, oh, I'm not your dad, but I like it that you called me dad because my dad read me stories too. I want you to look all the women out here. At some point, God reminds us in the Bible, we all get a chance to be the mom sometimes. Sometimes there are people who really need to be loved just like a mom would love them, and we get a chance to do that, don't we? So your job today, you can take, why don't you take two or three coloring sheets today? Just a moment, we'll talk in a minute. And you guys can color extra sheets for anybody who you know, might be a mom, might be a grandma, might be an aunt, might be a teacher, anybody who's loved you and cared for you just like a mom, okay? Can we do that? Yeah. Those are real flowers, I promise. You got a white one? I got them from Uptown at Coffee and Carnations. You can color it and then give it to your mom, yep. That would be awesome. You can give it to a teacher. Yeah, you can all grab an extra one. We'll make sure that everybody who needs an extra one can get an extra one. So we'll wait till after church though, okay? Just one right now. Just one right now. Yeah, okay. Well, we need to pray. Can we pray? How do we pray? How do we pray? Oh, hold on. Just one right now. We're just taking one right now. I know it's so tempting. We're just taking one right now. All right. Can we fold our hands and pray? Like that? Oh, while you're holding your flower, even better. All right. How do we pray? Dear God, we want to thank you this morning. And we remember that all of us have a mom. But we actually have a lot of people who are like our mom. We have grandmas and aunts and neighbors and teachers. God, even our older and younger sisters can be like moms to us sometimes. We remember this morning that you have given us so many women who care for us and raise us and love us. And so, God, we're also going to pray as we say thank you to them today. We're also going to pray that sometimes you remind us there are other people in the world that we see who maybe need a hug or some love like a mom or dad would give them. God, we thank you that Jesus reminds us we are all one big family. So God, we're going to remember that today as we remember the mothers specifically. We pray this in your name and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Your sheets, and we'll remind you, just one flower till after church. There are suckers over there you can grab. We'll invite the singers to come back up as we wrap sing together. Fairest Lord Jesus, would you stand this morning as we continue in worship?
check, check. Is this one on? Fantastic. We're going to play a little game before we get to our scripture this morning, a little Mother's Day game, and it's going to be played by sections. Each section is a team. So we have four teams this morning. Each section will be playing for all of the mothers, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, all of the women who have been mothers in their lives. So whichever section wins earns a prize for all the women in your section. And the prize this morning could not be any more fitting for anyone who's ever mothered anyone else. The prizes this morning are all the leftover snacks that no children in this church wants to eat. There are old hard gummies. There are root beer suckers. There's a few fun dips left. We'll pass it through, and whichever section wins gets this giant bowl of unwanted sugar. Is there a better prize? I don't think so on Mother's Day. Here's how the game works. Anybody can answer from any section. But the first section I hear gets the point. I'm going to read the names of children from famous television mothers. The first section who can call out which famous mother it is gets a point. I don't want to hear the name of the TV show. You have to know the first name of the famous mother. We'll start easy and we'll work our way up to hard. Are you ready? Maggie. I hear it over here. Right there. One point for this section right here. Maggie, Lisa, and Bart. One point for section three. Mother two. Cindy. Who said it? Can you name all the other children? That's what I should be doing. For bonus points, can you name the other children? I'll give you five bonus points for that. <laughs> Carrie, you could, have, you could have said the bonus kids, right? So you get bonus. I'll just give you bonus for those. Sure. Here we go. This one. Some of these mothers had children beyond the time when I apparently watched the show. So I did not know that these were children that belonged. Grace. And of course, if you think of another mother who had these children, that's not on my card. Who? Harriet Nelson, that's not who I have. I don't know if it was a grace. Carrie. Who said Caroline? Caroline Ingalls is correct. Can you name the other two children for bonus points? That's correct. You get all three points. Group one, three points. Wait. Did you, who had the five-pointer? That was here. Oh, yeah, you got eight points. Group one, eight points. Group three, three points. Group two and four. Thanks for coming today. <laughs> Rudy. Claire. Claire. I heard Claire right here. All right, there are one, two, three, four more kids in the Huxtable family. Can you name them? Okay, Theo. Theo. Um, Vanessa. Vanessa. And we'll give you two more points. Bonus points for three. You're up to six points. Hey, hey, good job. Here we go. Trudy. Oh, uh, Trudy? No. no. Denise and Sandra. Sorry, I should have mentioned the other ones. Here we go. I, did, I was not aware of this first one. Pubert. This next one's going to give it away. Pugsley. Morticia, can you name the last obvious child for another two points? Wednesday. Wednesday is correct. It is now tied. Team one, eight points. Team three, eight points. Teams two and four. The real winners because they don't watch a lot of television, apparently. Wallace. June. Who said June? Team two is on the board with one point. <laughs> I will not only give you a bonus point, if you can name the other son, but if you can name the other son's real name. Theodore. Theodore, and he was known as? 
the bee of beaver. Leave it to beaver. Eight to three to eight. <laughs> Raymond. Robert. Marie. I heard Marie right over here. One point because we already named all the kids. Hard one. Oh no, we'll go with an easy one first. We'll save the hard one for last. Joni. I heard Marion over here. What's that? Can we get some shows from 2000? Nope, we can't. Not my fault if you were not raised on Nick and Knight. I would give you some if I knew any from 2000. We're going classic. But you know what? Bonus point for asking, because I like when people ask your questions. Nine to three to eight to one. Wait, who said, uh, who said Marion? This group? All right. Carrie, you were on top of it. Can you name Marion's other child? Richie. Of course, Marion Cunningham from Happy Days. All right. I'm going to give this one to just group four. Just group four. Jerry. DJ. Darlene. We don't watch TV every day. <laughs> <laughs> Becky. Hoo <laughs> 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 Ryan Martin with Roseanne. You waited until the answer is only one point, but good job. All right, I'm going to give five bonus points to this last one. I believe this show went off the air in the 80s. I'm not sure. One child, Dorothy. Sophia. I heard it right here. Who was it? <laughs> Sophia from Golden Girls. Well, I don't know what. We're going to count you as part of group four. <laughs> because at this point, it makes no matter whatsoever. Which of these two? We have a tie. Oh, no. Group one, nine points. Group two, three points. Group three, eight points. Group four, three points with your last win. Next week, I'll try to find out. Are, were they, did they still make TV shows after 1985? <laughs> Family Matters, I'm hearing as a term. Full House. These are TV shows on television. <laughs> Let me write those. I'm writing those down right now. Got him. You better come with your A game next week. <laughs> Maybe I'm saving those for Father's Day. I'm still asking folks to give us their wisdom. If you could go back in time and give yourself some spiritual wisdom, what wisdom would you give yourself? Maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years. We got our box stuffed between last Sunday and this Sunday with advice you would give, like parental or mother advice. You can keep giving us parental advice. We have Father's Day coming up. We've got lots of other advice people's dropped in. You can put in more than one piece of advice that you would give yourself. Some people have asked that. Uh, but uh, we got tons and tons of advice about either being children or about parents. Um, and I'm going to add some scriptural backup for some of them. But this morning we start with the person who put, visit my parents more and ask them about their growing up. If I could go back 25 to 30 years ago, I would have not been so rebellious towards my parents. I wish I would have listened more and taken the advice that they gave me. It would have saved me a lot of hardship. Best parenting advice. Keep Balance. Don't let one aspect of your child's life consume everything. Make them try new things. Our first scripture today comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Would you read it with me? Together. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. 
but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. When everything else in life was bad, my parents always made sure home was a safe place. Try and remember I am the parent, not the teacher, not the coach, not the boss. They will have lots and lots of those, but not many good parents. If they are lucky, give them what only a parent can give them. From Isaiah chapter 66, verses 12 through 13, let us read together. Together, for this is what the Lord says. I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. One of the early hints that God is telling us there might be mothers and fathers out in the world beyond the ones we were born to. Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 through 50. Hear now the word of the Lord, a passage on mothers I have not read before because This is a bit of an awkward exchange between Jesus and his mother. Not the first one we've seen. Quite a few months ago, we did the wedding where Jesus turned the water into wine and his mom kind of needles him and tells everybody, look, 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 my son can do this trick. All everybody pay attention. And Jesus tries to say, woman, it is not my time. And yet she convinces him to do his first public miracle. Now from Matthew Chapter 12, verses 46 through 50. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. This story appears several times in the Gospels. Later on in Mark, it even adds a line that tells us his mother and brothers came to speak to him because they thought he might be going out of his mind. They thought that he might be going crazy, which is a pretty bold statement from a woman who about 30 years earlier was running around telling people she was going to give birth to the Son of God and singing songs about it. Now this same woman is watching her son do ministry in the world and with her other children goes to the house where he is working and wants to meet with him because she thinks he might be going a little crazy. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to them, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. As we read through Scripture from the beginning right up to that point, God is continuing to reveal a plan about human families that at the time was much more shocking than it is to us now. At the time, especially during the Old Testament, families were very isolated and almost clannish, or tribal. You protected and cared for your own family. And if something happened to the rest of your family and you were left alone, you hoped someone else would take you in. But times were such that food was scarce, livestock might be scarce, work might be scarce, you might end up begging on the streets for someone to love you, and yet, lo and behold, through the Old Testament and up until the arrival of Jesus, Jesus continues to give us hints that God's family extends well past the people you share a roof with. 
And in this exchange with his disciples, it gets awkward. Because we've read numerous times through Scripture, honor your father and mother. Listen to your father and mother. You loving your parents is extremely pleasing to God. And here we find Jesus' own mother standing at the door and him saying, at this moment, I don't have time to see her. It's cold. It is a rough moment where Jesus uses his own family to make a bigger point, which we don't even necessarily see the fruition of what's about to come. But I think what Jesus was doing in that moment with his own mother and family was a hint about what we will read in John chapter 19. Our last piece of wisdom this morning from the wisdom box. Don't forget that when you become a parent, You're going to have a lot of opportunities to parent a lot of other kids who really need it because they happen to hang out with your kids. Don't forget that when you become a parent, you're going to have a lot of opportunities to parent a lot of other kids who really need it because they happen to hang out with your kids. From John chapter 19, verses 25 through 27. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As tough as that moment is between Jesus and his mother and his brothers, as much as the other disciples might have been standing in the room questioning why Jesus was ignoring his own mother, even though he'd been the one to already tell them, honor your parents, Jesus is taking that moment to remind them, family in God's eyes is bigger than what you first assume. John, who is the disciple spoken in this passage, from John, as Jesus tells him from this point on, This woman who was my mother is now your mother. As he tells his own mother, this disciple is now your son. Rings so true with that wisdom dropped in the box, you will have opportunities to parent other children who need it. Jesus knew even his own mother needed to be told Your children number far more than the ones you raised in your house. He knew his disciples needed to be reminded, your mother is more than just the woman who raised you. If all of us are truly God's children and all of us are truly obedient to God, you have to realize your family is bigger than the people you grew up with. Jesus tells his mother, you have one more son you may not have even been aware of that you will now continue to raise and take care of. He tells John, you have another mother you were not aware of that you will now be in charge of caring for. As we continue on through the New Testament, we are not shocked if you see all these clues coming that Jesus keeps extending what family means to God. And even as unshocking as it is, For us to read in the New Testament, take care of the widows, take care of the orphans. It seems second nature to us in this day and age, to those people, it was shocking to hear, I'm now in charge of these people that I have no blood relation to. I'm now in charge of these people 
who are suffering hardships because they are technically my family in the eyes of God. Who are your mothers? Who are your brothers and sisters and fathers? Jesus takes this moment to remind all of his followers it is bigger than just the household you grew up with. In that moment when Jesus is telling his disciples, who's my mother? He's prepping John to one day hear, she's your mother too. He's prepping his mother to one day hear, this is also your son. He's prepping those around him to open their minds to what family truly means in the eyes of God. In 2019, there was a story that made a little bit of rumbling in the news and then kind of disappeared, which is a shame because it was a really, a really touching story about a mom in uh, Huron, Ohio, named Laurel. And uh, it didn't go into a lot of details, but it didn't have to. All it said was that there was a couple tragedies in Huron, Ohio, in one year where the community lost two of their children. And Laurel being a mother to a number of children on her own, a stepmother to a child from a new marriage, suddenly realized there's this whole community full of hurting kids who might need more than just one mom to rely on. And so she started going to school every day, she asked permission to sit at a lunch table and just talk to any kid who needed to chat, especially if they were grieving over the loss of these two other kids. And she realized right away that not only were there some kids who didn't have a mom to lean on in this moment, but there were some kids who didn't have a mom to lean on in a million different ways. She realized after talking to kids for a few weeks, there were kids who were going home and didn't have food to eat. There were kids who were going home and didn't have supplies for school. There were kids who were coming up on holidays and knew they would not get gifts. There were kids who were coming up to Mother's Days and had nothing to give to their own mothers. She realized that even for the families who had strong, stable, hardworking mothers, there were gaps in these kids' lives where they were not being loved as fully as God wanted them to be. And so she started her own nonprofit ministry called Everyone's Mom. And she said, if in any way, shape, or form you need a mom, I'm going to be that mom. If anybody else wants to volunteer with me, we're going to flood this community with moms in such a way that no kid who needs it will lack. And it turned into a food bank and a clothing closet and reached far and wide in ways that she could never have imagined. And yet I think as Jesus talks to his mom, as Jesus talks to his disciples, I think he's also hinting to us about what the wider family looks like. When you consider all those people who were standing at the cross looking up at Jesus, and you ask yourself, what is it that ultimately brought together John and Mary as family? Why were those two in that moment standing next to one another? Their faith in Christ, their shared pain. And this mother named Laurel in Huron, Ohio, realized there are a whole ton of people in this community who have shared pain. And a whole lot of people who need the love of Jesus Christ. And if they fit into either one of those categories, they were family. What brings us together more closely than anything else as children of God? Our love and devotion to Jesus Christ and moments of shared pain when you realize, I need more mothers more fathers, more sisters, more brothers. 
I need to realize that God doesn't just want me to love those few people he's given to me in my life. He wants me to extend that love to anyone else in the world who may need to understand what it feels like to have family. On this day when we celebrate all of the women who have mothered us in one way, shape, or form, we remember that this is exactly the plan God had for the church. This is exactly why God in Scripture refers to his group of believers as a family. This is exactly the moments in people's lives where we can grow the family beyond what we could even imagine when we see people in the world who are standing alone and hurting and in pain and not understanding what the love of a mother or father or sister or brother or aunt or teacher can be, we are the ones who can give them something that no one else can. Who is your mother? Who are your brothers and sisters? Christ has shown us it is every person you come into contact with if you are willing to acknowledge God is the true father of every child on earth. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning on this Mother's Day, Lord, we confess that we, uh, we still try to live in that old world mentality of taking care of our own, looking out for those around us, in our house. Looking past those who may be outside of our immediate family and leaving them to be helped or loved by others. And yet, God, when we look at this scripture from the book of Psalms to the book of Isaiah to the book of Ruth and the love and mother relationship that extends between Ruth and Naomi, to the own words of your son, Jesus Christ, who paired his mother with his friend and in some of his dying moments reminded them that they were also family. God, we remember this morning you have called us all to not just look beyond our own households, but to also look beyond our own church. You have called us all to remember that when we see every person who walks this planet, we are to remember to see them through your eyes. We are to remember that they are your children, created by you, knit together in their mother's womb, and they are to be loved and treated accordingly. God, we pray this morning as we celebrate the mothers in our lives today, we would continue on from this place and remember that there are many, many more people who need to feel that same love from Jesus Christ. Let us remember who is our mother. Who are our brothers? Who are our sisters? Who are those you have put into our lives to come together in times of need and be reminded we are known and loved and forgiven and called to follow you? We pray this in your name. Amen. Would you stand this morning as we receive our benediction and sing our last closing song together? As you leave this house of worship today, I would remind you not only remember for yourself, but to remember those you come in contact with. If you are someone who needs to be held close in protection, if you are someone who needs to be held on the lap of a parent and nursed back to health and love, if you are someone who wonders, who am I to love? Jesus Christ reminds us this morning, here are your brothers, here are your sisters, here are your mothers and your fathers. Go spread the good word of all those whom God
has come to love. Go in peace. Amen.